Robert in D.C., how are you? Hi. I'm good. Uh, my question for you all today is, uh, as atheists, uh, I guess, isn't atheism as dogmatic as theism? And isn't agnosticism a more logical way of thinking? No and no. And why, and why, why is that? I can clarify, but I want to make sure you turn it down so that we don't get feedback, because I heard myself. Um, First of all, atheism isn't, all right. isn't as dogmatic as religion because it's not an ism. It's a response to an ism. It is the position that I don't accept your God belief. It is not a declaration of absolute certainty, and it is not anything that we're asserting is necessarily true, um, that there are, in fact, no gods. What we're saying, what atheism is, is this, I don't believe. And um, the idea, first of all, agnosticism and atheism aren't mutually exclusive terms. One addresses right. what you believe, one addresses what you know or claim to know. And so they can be coupled because knowledge is a subset of belief. Um, so Gnosticism and agnosticism is a subset of atheism and theism. So you could be an agnostic atheist, and most atheists are, or you could be a Gnostic mm -hmm. atheist, and m most atheists are not, and it depends on your definition of knowledge. But if I ask you, do you believe in God, and you say, I'm an agnostic, you haven't answered the question, because I didn't ask you what you knew. Right. I asked you what you believe, wh whether or not you believe in a God. And on that, there are only two options. I, if you believe, you're a theist. If you don't, even if your answer is, I don't know, or I'm not even sure what I believe, you're an atheist. Because I, I fail to see how you could actually believe in a God and not recognize that you believe in a God. I mean, right. to me, theism is a positive assertion that I do believe in God, and if you can't make it, that you're an atheist. Now, th that is... Uh, by and large, dictionary atheism, and that's uh, kind of a philosophical look at it. Who atheists, uh -huh. who atheists are, what we do, what the atheist community is about, it's about a whole lot more than just, I don't believe in a God. Right. There's, there's, there's a lot more to it than that. It's not, it doesn't derive directly from atheism. It is just positions that are consistent with atheism. My atheism is the product of my skepticism. Right. Um, my views on certain certain things are based primarily on my humanism these are all uh, they're not they're not contingent upon one another but they're consistent ideas yeah the little creed that i i quoted um, during the presentation earlier today skepticism is my nature free thought is my methodology agnosticism is my conclusion atheism is my opinion and humanitarianism is my motivation and so that, that sums it up for me. Another, another quick point with that would be the dogmatic nature of religion is top-down. And, of course, we try, to, um, we try to not give that appearance sometimes by saying, now, don't take my word for it. You know, read your Bible and find it for yourself. But that's really an exception to the rule. That's something that is said but not necessarily practiced. The whole point of religion is to follow someone. That's what religion does. That's part of the right that you're involved in. Where my experience with atheism has been exactly the opposite. It's actually from the ground up. Each and every individual that I've met within the movement has absolutely, they may be starstruck because they're celebrities throughout our culture, but they are not in any way obligated to anyone out there, regardless of how many books they've sold or how many lectures they give. It doesn't matter who that person is. If they get up and they say something that is scientifically wrong or fails to meet the test of reason, they will be called on the carpet for it. Yeah, it's, it's not an ism. There's no tenets. There's That's no right. instructions. There's no uh, authorities. There's no rituals. There's none of the, none of the things, in the, and there's no dogma because they, we're not asserting anything that, that is beyond question. Uh, religions do assert that things are beyond question, even when they pretend that you can question right. it. It's, it's that this is true. Uh, it reminds me, we were, we were in Kamloops, uh, I was in Kamloops recently and had a debate, and you know, w one of the opponents was talking about um, how it's just true. If the God exists, and if you're open and honest, he'll reveal himself to you. And my question was, okay, why, has, why didn't I get this revelation? And, you know, it, what, did I just not try hard enough? And his answer was pretty much, yeah, you, you really just, yeah. you had some bias or you didn't try hard enough. And to me, that's, 
it's absolutely despicable and it's yeah. based on this idea that oh I can't possibly be wrong about this and the Bible can't be wrong about this and so the Bible says God will reveal himself to you I've had what I think is this revelation so clearly it's true which means that if you haven't had this revelation it's your fault right that's how they get to the unquestionable aspect of it there's nothing remotely like that yeah. In the, there's nothing in atheism, but nothing like that. And it's one of the most disgusting parts about religion is because it, it is seen as being your fault if you don't get this revelation or if you don't have this understanding. Then, once again, instead of having a, a situation where you have the burden of proof being put upon the person making the claims, you have something even worse than that. Not only is there no burden of proof, but also the guilt is shifted to the person that mm -hmm. doesn't see it. So a claim is made, and if you don't see it, then you're at fault. It's, uh, it's filled inherently with guilt. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, there's no question that religion is, you know, is not, is not sound way of thinking. But, you know, in my opinion, and this is what I don't understand, is I guess so you're saying atheism is sort of like, like your opinion is, is what you were saying, is... Is you just don't believe personally Correct. That, that, that something can be there. No, uh, instead no, well, of the belief that you're not sure whether one, something is there or is not there. Yeah, the example, the example there's, a, there's a burden of proof that goes with the claim that a God exists. The example that I've continually used is a court case. If the, the, the fact of the matter is the defendant on trial is either guilty or not guilty, or guilty or innocent. Um, that's the fact. They either did the crime or they did not do the crime. And likewise, a God either exists or does not exist. But the question for the jury is not, did they actually do this? It's what do you believe about the claim that they did do this? And so that's why g juries don't vote guilty or innocent. They vote guilty or not guilty. And those people in the not guilty category may actually suspect that the individual is guilty. There just wasn't enough there to convince them. They don't have to be convinced of innocence. Likewise, on the question of the existence of God, um, there are people who are convinced, as I am, that there actually are no gods. There are other people who just aren't convinced that the various gods that have been um, suggested actually exist. And so the, the line that I, that I used was, I find the defendant God not guilty of existing. If you can't see the distinction between saying not guilty and right. saying innocent, then you'll never see the distinction between atheist and perhaps anti-theist. Right. And it, it also sounds like the same old story of if you have an opinion, mm -hmm. then you're being dogmatic. You know, if yeah. you're sharing an opinion, you're being dogmatic. And that's not a fair argument. Yeah, the closest, the closest thing to, uh, and, it, and it's not even dogma, but the closest thing to a flat assertion that atheism makes is that theism has embedded its burden of proof. Right. And, and I, I'll, keep, I'll happily defend that in a debate anywhere anybody wants to, because theism hasn't met its burden of proof. No brand, no doctrine, no denomination of any branch of any religion has actually met its burden of proof. And some of them not only recognize this, but assert that they couldn't ever possibly, oh, I couldn't ever possibly prove right. to you that a God exists. Okay, then why are we talking about it? That's right. Just take it by faith. Just trust me because you like me. Yeah, and if you, and th that gets down to the you have to believe to believe. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. How the hell does that make sense? And, yeah. and where, where, else in the, where else in reality do you hear the sort of excuses and arguments and language twisting that you hear in this, right. you know, the discussion about the existence of God? Right. And faith, um, it's what adults call pretending. <laughs> that's, that's what faith is. It's pretending. Yeah, I, I, used to, I used to have a bunch of different working definitions of faith, but I've, I've changed to where faith is the excuse people give for believing something when they don't have a good reason. Right. So pretending is a good shortcut for that. Robert, I hope that gets to your question. Thanks so much for calling in. Thanks.